Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation video. There's 82 days to go into a GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of listing outcomes. I really like this topic because I just like being able to work through systematically and write down all the outcomes that can happen. And if you've got the revision card, so the revision card number 72 in listing outcomes is really useful. And you know, here you've got a question about a pizza and pizza toppings that Emily can choose. So ham and chicken, ham and olives, ham and pepperoni and so on. So listen outcomes, I'm gonna go through uh, some questions on listen outcomes. Feel free to remember to pause the video and to give the questions a try yourself as well. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about the practice questions and where you can find those. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to look at list and outcomes. So in today's video, I'm going to go through four list and outcomes questions. Feel free to pause each question at the beginning of it and to try the question yourself if you want to, if you feel pretty confident with list and outcomes. Alternatively, you watch me go through it and then try the practice questions. So here we've got a question that says, Molly chooses a starter and a main. And we've been asked to list all the possible combinations. So there's three possible starters, soup, dough balls, or kebab. And then for main, we've got a curry, pizza, and stir fry. I'm just thinking it's interesting combinations. Uh, feel free to pause the video now to try this question yourself to list all the possible outcomes. Okay, so now let's list our possible outcomes. Now, whenever I'm listing outcomes, I like to work through in order. So I'm going to start with soup, and I'm going to do soup and curry, soup and pizza, and then soup and stir fry. Then I'll move on to doables and so on. So let's start off with soup. So Molly could have a soup and a curry, so soup and curry. Now I'm just going to write S and C for soup and curry rather than writing soup and curry. She could have soup and pizza, so that's soup and pizza. And she could have soup and stir fry. So it's soup and stir fry. And I'm just going to call stir fry S. So soup and stir fry. So we've got soup and curry, soup and pizza, and soup and stir fry. So there are all the possible combinations with soup. Now let's move on to dough balls. She could have dough balls and curry. She could have dough balls and pizza. And she could have dough balls and stir fry. And then finally, if we move on to kebab, she could have a kebab and a curry. She could have a kebab and a pizza. And she could have a kebab and a stir fry. And that's it. So they're all the possible outcomes. And that's it. And this question, I could have written them out in full, soup and curry, soup and pizza, soup and stir fry, and so on. But I've just used the letters to help me do it a bit more quickly. And that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So we've got James takes part in one activity on Monday and one activity on Tuesday. And we've got the choices on Monday. He can either do football or baseball. And on Tuesday, he can either do rugby, hockey, or swimming. And we've been asked to list all possible combinations. So feel free to pause the video now to try this question yourself. Okay, so let's start off working in order. Let's start off with if he does football on a Monday, he could do football and then rugby. He could do football and then hockey, so football and then hockey. And he could do football and then swimming, so football and then swimming. So they're the possible options if he does football on a Monday. Now, instead of doing football, if he does baseball on a Monday, he could do baseball and rugby. He could do baseball and hockey. And he could do baseball and swimming. So the six possible combinations are football and rugby, football and hockey, football and swimming. Baseball and rugby, baseball and hockey, baseball and swimming. And that's it. So if you got that right, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, this time we're told that three coins are flipped. So three coins are flipped, so they can either land on heads or tails. And we've been asked to list all possible outcomes. And one's been done for us, head, head, head. So whenever I'm doing a question like this, I like to work for an order, working systematically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by letting the first coin stay as a head. So we've got a head, a head, and a head. That's one possible option. Now I'm going to keep the first coin as a head and think of all the other possible outcomes we could have where the first coin is a head. So we could have a head, a head, and a tail. We could have a head, a tail, and a head. And also we could have a head, a tail, and a tail. So they're the four combinations we could have if the first coin is a head, because we could have a head and a head, a head and a tail, a tail and a head, and a tail and a tail. So they're the four combinations we could have if the first coin is a head. Now let's say that the first coin is a tail. We could have a tail, a head, and a head. We could have a tail, a head, and a tail. We could have a tail, a tail, and a head. And finally, we could have a tail, a tail, and a tail. And that's it. So there's eight possible outcomes, and they are a head, a head, and a head, a head, a head, and a tail, a head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and tail, tail, tail. And that's it. And whenever I've done this question, rather than just jumping around and doing, well, head, 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 tail, tail, head, and so on, what I've done was I start off by letting the, the first coin stay as head and list all those possible outcomes. And then I let the first coin be a tail and then list all those possible outcomes. And that's it. Okay. And let's have a look at one last example. Okay, so this question, we've got a player who's going to pick a counter from tub one. So we've got this tub one with green, blue, and red counters in there. And we've got a tub two with a yellow, green, pink, red, and orange counter in there. So a player is going to pick one at random from tub one and one at random from tub two. And we've been asked to list all possible outcomes to begin with. Okay, so feel free to pause the video now to list all possible outcomes. 
Okay, so let's say that the person picks a green one from tub one. So it's going to be green and tub one, and then they could pick a yellow. They could do a green and a green. They could do a green and a pink, a green and a red, and a green and an orange, a green and a red, and a green and an orange. So they're the possible outcomes if a green one's chosen from tub one. Now let's say that a blue one's chosen from tub one. So it's a blue and a yellow, a blue and a green, a blue and a pink, a blue and a red, and a blue and an orange. So they're all the possible options if we have a blue as the first counter. And then finally for red, we could have a red and a yellow, we could have a red and a green, we could have a red and a pink, we could have a red and a red, and we could have a red and an orange. So they're all the possible outcomes. And if you got those, well done. There's 15 of them in total, and if you got them all, well done. Okay, and then finally, we're told if the two colors are the same, the player wins. Write down the probability that a player wins. So let's look for options where the colors are the same. So green, yellow, no. Green, green, yes, that would be a winner. Green, pink, no. Green, red, no. Green, orange, no. Any with blue, no, that's not possible. There's no blue in tub two. And then in terms of red, we've got red, red. So there's two possible outcomes where the colors are the same. There could be a green and a green, or a red and a red. So it'd be two out of the 15. So the probability that the player wins would be two over 15, or two 15ths, and that's it. Okay, and that's it. So in this video, we've gone through listing outcomes and how the importance of working through systematically, not just to randomly pick outcomes, to go through and work in a particular order to list all the possible outcomes. And in this video, we've gone through listing outcomes. If the practice questions are in the description below, it's, it's a quite an important topic to be able to practice those questions because, again, it's hard to predict the context in which the listing outcomes will be in. It might be coins being flipped, it might be dice being rolled, it might be pizza toppings or ice cream toppings. You know, it's hard to predict the actual context. But by doing lots of practice questions, that makes sure that you're really confident in this topic. And it's a topic which I think that you, know, you should be able to try and get full marks in a topic like this, listing outcomes. It's, it's quite a nice topic. Okay, but I hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Remember, 3 o'clock tomorrow will be 81 days to go into your GCC maths exams. Cheers. Bye.